Shalom, Israel. It's your brother, Marcus G, back for yet another Truth for Thought. Um, as you probably can tell, I got a couple of things that have changed here. Um, I have instituted a new camera. I'm also instituting my green screen, as you can see in the background. So um, trying to get some things going. I'm uh, also looking into um, a mic. Um, I know someone commented on one of my past videos about um, the quality of the audio. So I'm going to try to address that as well. But let's get right into it. We are going to be address. I'm going to be addressing the nation in regards to divorce. Um, I was unaware. Um, I was made a little more aware um, recently that there are Israelites that probably don't know that divorce is definitely in the Bible. It is spoken of a great number of times, actually, in the Bible. So I wanted to go over this because um, there are people that believe that divorce is not a righteous thing. Now, I will say this. Divorce is not the preferred thing that doesn't mean that it is not righteous or cannot be done in a righteous way um, in regards to the nation of Israel. So what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and go into the statues of man and wife. So if you would please turn with me in your King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha, and we're going to start at Numbers chapter 30, and we're going to do verses 1 through 16. We're going to do the whole, the whole chapter, okay? So we're going to start at Numbers 30, verse 1. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. So, although... Um, and you probably heard me say statutes, um, although the, it is something that is commanded, you're going to notice, um, especially at the very last um, scripture, you're going to notice that these things are not titled as commandments. Although it says here, which the Lord hath commanded, these are actually statutes, and you'll see that a little later. Verse 2, if a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. Very, very self-explanatory. A lot of these statutes in regards to a man and wife or husband and wife are going to be very straightforward. Um, again, I'm just getting this to build a basis as far as the man and the wife. And then we'll actually go into the actual concept of divorce and we'll just do it that way. So verse three if a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth. Now, there, back in those times, there was a quote-unquote courting period. And in that period, the wife-to-be or at that point in time, she would just be a maid or maid, would still be at home with her father, with her family, with the head of her then family, which would be the father. All right. So that's what this is going into. Verse four, and her father hear her vow and her bond wherewith she has bound her soul and her father shall hold his peace at her. 
Then all her vows shall stand in every bond wherewith she hath bond her soul shall stand. So um, when you're in a, as the world has a wedding procedure, there's um, a point when, you know, you have the father that walks the bride to be down and you'll hear the proceeding officer will ask if there's anyone here who has something to say, please let him speak their piece or hold back not your piece. Well, at this point, if the father is holding his peace, he's acknowledging the marriage in the procession right there. He's, he's allowing his daughter to go from him to the husband to be. And it's like speak now or forever hold your peace, something like that. So, and you see here, it says, and her father shall hold his peace at her, meaning he doesn't speak up. He's giving a actual, the actual consent of his daughter when the groom. Verse five, but if her father disallow her in the day that he hear it, meaning at that wedding, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bond her soul shall stand. So at that point in time, if he says anything, the father of the bride decides, I don't want her to marry him. At that point, via the most high and, and his commandments and his statutes, at that point in time, that marriage cannot happen. Point blank. And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. So now, what this saying is, the Lord will forgive her because she thought he was the one for her. However, for some reason, her father felt like he wasn't. So the Most High looks at it and says, daughter, you are about to make a mistake. Your father stopped you. I forgive you. It's okay. All right. Verse six. And if she had at all an husband, when she bowed or uttered out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it and held his peace at her in that day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand in her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. So now we're going, we're transitioning from if the father does say, does hold or does not hold his peace, now we're going to the grown to be. If he holds his peace, he doesn't say, no, I don't want this to happen, then the vows should stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. So again, just like with um, the father of the bride, if the groom-to-be of the bride-to-be disallows it, it has no effect. And again, the Most High will um, excuse her because she thought he was the one for her. He felt like he wasn't the one for her. And he basically, daughter, again, he was about to make a mistake. He, as a man, disallowed it. So it's okay. That mistake is all right. I'm overlooking that. All right. But every vow of a widow 
and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their soul, shall stand against her. So, this is talking about other women that are present. And the, the widow had vowed her soul with her father and her husband. Her husband has passed, and they were married at one point in time. And this is the first time we see divorce as we're covered. And of her that is divorced, meaning there are ladies there in the present, have their fathers there with the groom to be. They got married, yet they got divorced. Again, which is what we're going to touch on after we get through these statutes of man and wife, okay? Verse 10, and if she vowed in her husband's house or bond her soul by a bond with an oath, verse 11, and her husband heard it and held his peace at her and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand and every bond with wherewith she bound her soul shall stand again. Self-explanatory, the husband-to-be didn't disallow it, or the husband just didn't disallow it, so it stands. But if her husband have utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her husband hath made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. Again, um, this goes, and I want I want you to know is I want you to understand Israel. We're we're talking about an Israelite man and an Israelite woman that both know who they are. So they're in the truth. Okay. The husband hears. The wife make a vow. He didn't like that. He said he, in his mind, he wants that vow to be a void. Because of that, it is so. And the Most High still will forgive her of that vow. All right. Every vow, verse thirteen. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void. So I want you to think about the hierarchy or the order of the true Israelite household. And the hierarchy is as follows. First, there's the most high. Then there's the son and Jesus. Christ or Yahweh, however you, um, however you, you know, speak of him, his name. Then there's the king or man. Then there's the queen or woman. And let me go back. The king or man or husband. Then there's the queen or woman or wife. Then there are the kids, or prince, the princes, and the princesses. All right, so that's the hierarchy of it. So, and that's in a, again, an Israelite home that is righteous, um, that is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Again, these are statutes. All right. Verse, we left off at verse 15. Yeah, verse 15. But if he shall any any ways make them void after that he had heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between again. 
These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth in her father's house. So again, this is going from the courting period to the actual transition of man and wife intertwined as one. Well. Okay. So we saw on in verse nine the first mention of divorce. Now we're gonna be we're gonna go through a number of scriptures, actually uh, 11, and they're gonna come from the Old Testament, from the New Testament, as well as from the Apocrypha. So seeing that we now know the statutes of man and wife, um, both from the very end of the courting period into them being intertwined as one, let's go to now to Leviticus, 21 verse 14. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 14. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to see first if, okay, we saw the divorces in the Bible, yes. We saw that in once. Um, we're going to see other places where the divorce is there. And actually, after, I, after we go in through this verse, we're going to get a definition. Okay. So Leviticus 21, verse 14, a widow or a divorced woman or profane or an harlot, these shall he not take but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. And what this is in regards to is the Most High spoke with Moses um, to speak to the priests of the sons of Aaron. Okay? And this is in regards to the type of woman that these sons should marry. So we go back down to verse 14. It says, a widow or a divorced woman or profane or an harlot, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. Okay. So now let's get the definition of divorce. Divorce by definition, and this is in the Webster's Encyclopedia. A divorce is the legal dissolution of a marriage by a court or other competent body. Now, Israel, I want you to understand that the Most High has had, had established or has established that Even we as Israelites are to obey the law of the land as long as they don't conflict with the laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay? So, a divorce, be it per the law of the land to avoid polygamy, uh, the crime of polygamy, um, it does not conflict with the law of the land because the reason for a divorce and the law of the land is to avoid polygamy, okay? Um, polygamy is not a thing if you are truly an Israelite. Now, a lot, a lot of folks like to say, well, what about um, King Solomon? King Solomon had all these wives and concubines. And you know what? I'm going I'm to 
I want to go to. I want to go to that for a reason. I want to go to that for a reason. So if you would, let me pull that up. We're going to look at that because so we're going to go to first Kings chapter 11. I got to get this chapter 11. We're going to do verses three through six. Actually, we're going to do Verses two through six. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Now, for those, and we're going to break this down. When he says, ye shall not go in to them, it means men, Israelite men, you should not have sex with these other nations of people. And they come in onto you, Israelite women. They shouldn't come in, or they should not have sex. You can have sex with them. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods, Solomon clave unto these in love. Now let's continue. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it, verse 4, for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart from other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David, his father. Verse five, for Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. When he had all these hundreds of wives and princesses and concubines, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Now, for anyone who feels like that is not sufficient enough, my brother in the truth, a good friend of mine, Mike Malice, has done two lessons on multiple ones, as well as, and that's in the his YouTube um, archive. You can check those out. He's also done a sexual immorality lesson, which you can catch on BitChute. I'll make sure to add all of those, links to all of those in the description of this lesson. So, Polygamy is not a thing, even for Israelites. Now, I say that, and I want you to understand, Israel. However, there is an instance where you can have multiple wives. I want you to understand, Israel, we don't meet those conditions. We're nowhere near meeting those conditions. The only condition is if Israel men are going to war and to avoid another coming of Sodom and Gomorrah because all of those men are amongst each other for however much time when they're going off to war, they are allowed to marry where they are going off to. But when they come home, it's business as usual. You will. It is not bring her home with you. 
you go home, it's business as usual. The only time. The only time. Now, we don't meet those because we're still in captivity. <laughs> this is not, that is Israel when Israel was not the base. And we, we never were the base, but we weren't sitting under the base and base people, meaning all the other nations, but definitely meaning Esau and Edom, the nation of Edom. We don't fit that criteria. So for those that say they want to have multiple wives, I will tell you, per the scripture, at this particular point in time, you are in Now, we were at war, and you were saying, you know, while we was out at war with whatever nation it may be, and this is just a hypothetical <laughs> scenario, I did with a lady. It's understood that that is to avoid another Sodom and Gomorrah. But when you get back to the house, that's it, you return to your wife. Okay. I too might do a, a, a lesson on multiple wives. Um, because there are people that are taking that, that which I just said, see, see, he said, he said, yeah, I did say, given that instance, which we nowhere near me, I did say that because it is written. That is in the Bible. If you find that in the Bible. But I don't want to go too far off subject. So we're going to go. We were, we, we visited Leviticus 21 and 14. Um, now I want to visit Leviticus 22 and 13. I'm sorry, um, Israel. I just had to get that. Um, I'm sorry. Even the most hot city did um, in the times when he was doing it. Um, and a lot of people say he did evil because he went away from the most high. No, that's not the only reason. Yes, that was an evil thing to do. You are to only have one wife. To have multiples, if you're now doing evil. Okay? So we're going to go to Leviticus 22 and 13. We're going to see here that divorce is mentioned again. Again, I gave you the definition of divorce. So let's see. Let's see what it, what it says. Leviticus 22 and 13. But if the priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and return and is returned unto her father's house, as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat, but there shall no stranger eat thereof. Remember, back in Numbers, we were looking at the transition of the bride, the man and the bride, and the transition from the courting period, which she's still in her father's house, and it's, it should have been in her youth when she was a maid or maid. And now this is saying she has been returned to her father's house as she was in her youth. So, but it says divorce. Also, it talks of the widow. Okay, so we know that the widow is the, the, the wife whose husband passed, okay? So, let's go from there to Deuteronomy, still Old, uh, Old Testament, Deuteronomy 24 and 1. All right, Deuteronomy 24 and 1. And it reads, Israel, pay close attention to this. And what it says, when a man hath taken a wife 
and married her. And it comes to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Verse two, and when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. It's right there in the body, scriptural. But I want to do something. I want to get the definition of a bill of divorce. And per the international standard, Bible Encyclopedia. Bill of Divorcement is a translation of the Hebrew Sefer Keritha. The two words literally rendered signify a document or book of cutting off, i.e. a certificate of divorce given by a husband to a wife so as to afford her the opportunity or privilege of marrying another man. Now, there are people in Israel that believe that divorce is not righteous. Here it's saying it is a righteous thing to do, All right? Now, again, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. It's not the preferred thing. Um, quite naturally, once you marry someone, you prefer it to be for forever. Um, however, although there are some that think that, you know, that not be the case, we clearly see here that it is a righteous thing and it also coincides with the quote unquote law of the land. Because if you notice here, verse two, and when she is departed out of the house, at that point in time, she may go and be another man which that is after he, her husband has written the bill of divorcement, which means he has divor a divorce decree, a divorce paper. As we saw in the definition of the bill of divorcement, it says a signifying a document or book of cutting off. A divorce decree, which you know in this world to be a divorce decree, which avoids her from being a polygamist. He gives her, if she has her divorce decree and she is departed out of his house, now she may go and be another man's wife. She can't do it prior to, just like he can't go and be another woman's husband prior to the bill of divorcement. Further proof, um, killing multiple wives again. But let's go a little further. We're going to go to down to verse three. And if the latter husband hate her, meaning she goes and marries another man after she gets her first bill of divorcement, and write her a bill of divorcement and give it giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband died, which took her to be his wife. So at that point in time, she's a widow. However, if you notice, she couldn't marry the second till she had a bill of divorce from the first. Now she's married to the second, and if he find uncleanliness, 
or hate her for some reason, he too can give a deal of divorcement. Okay, now I want, I know that there are probably people watching and saying, well, it's just a man giving the divorce. There's a reason for that. And I go again to the hierarchy. It's the most high, the son, the man, the king, the husband, then the woman, the queen, the wife. If you also notice, from what we saw in Numbers 30, in that transitional phase in those statues, prior to it being in that order, when she was staying home with her father, the order that she, where she fell in that order was most high, the son, her father, her mother, then her and her siblings. So her role as she transitioned to the wife, she took up a different role, which was still under the head of the household in that minority. So a woman, women can, let's say a queen had this question. Well, what if a woman wants a divorce? From what I'm seeing, the woman is to voice that or ask for a divorce or a bill of divorcement from the man. From the husband. Now, this is the thing. Okay? He can't go per the word. He's not to go and have any thing going on outside of his marriage. Neither can the one. Because as of right now, they are bound. So let's say he doesn't want out of the marriage. Well, let's say he's cheating on her. She wants out of the marriage. She's to come and ask, will you grant me a divorce? And we we saw in the definition of the bill of enforcement where it says, i.e., a certificate of divorce given by a husband to a wife so as to afford her the opportunity or privilege of marrying another man. So she wants out of it. He's doing evil out there in the world with other women, she wants out. She feels like she deserves better. She's working. So she goes about where she asks for a divorce and a deal of divorcement, a divorce decree. Okay? We're going to go from there to Isaiah chapter 50, verse 1. Still in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 15, verse 1. We're going to see another place where there is a mention of divorce. Thus saith the Lord, where is your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? You also want to know is put away. Um or the husband put the wife away, thus the divorce and the bill of divorcement, and he put her away. Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgression is your mother put away, or is your mother divorced? But yet again, we see 
divorce means. Um, again, this is for all of Israel. It's, you know, divorce shouldn't be in the, the nation of Israel. It's divorce has been in the nation of Israel for a long, long time. It's documented several times here in the world. It's again, not the preferred thing again, because the most high wants you to marry and multiply but be married to that person for forever. Okay? Now we're going to go still. We're just looking at places where divorce is mentioned in the Bible. So we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8. Let me just see. And I saw, it reads, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So, this is where the most high if you read your Bible, you know that the Most High referred to the nation of Israel as a bride, his bride. But here it's addressing Israel backsliding, committing adultery on the Most High, it's chasing, doing what these heathens do, chasing these idols. So guess what the most I did? It was a bill of divorce. Put her away. Put the nation of Israel away. If you don't know what Israel as a nation being put, put away means, go to Deuteronomy and read those curses. <laughs> That's Israel put away. Point blank. So... I'm going to go to the New Testament. We're going to see if even the sun, which means these words will be in red, said anything about divorce or a bill of divorce. We're just going to get a few places in the New Testament. And let's just, let's, let's get it. Let's see what we got. So we're going to go to Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 31. It's in red. Which means Jesus or Christ or Yahweh Shah, how you refer to him. He says, It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. A deal of divorce. If you're putting away your wife, be it because you are you as the man or the husband wanted to divorce her, or you put away your wife because she came to you seeking a divorce and you um you went ahead and said, okay, fine. It has been said, whosoever should put away his wife. It doesn't say any particular reason because she wanted him to put her away or because he wanted to put her away. Let him give her a writing of divorce. Verse 32, but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery and whosoever shall marry her that is divorce committed adultery. So this is where a lot of folks like to say, see, 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 you can't get a divorce. No, what he's saying is, if you put her away without that writing of divorcement, that's what you're going to cause. It's going to cause fornication. 
going to cause adultery. It can be for the man, for the husband, if he don't get that writing of divorcement or deal of divorcement. He say, fine, I'll divorce you. Then just walk out the door and go, go have sex with uh, Miss Jones down the street. At that point in time, guess what he's doing? Fornicating, committing adultery. You know why? The writing of divorcement has not been established. The bill of divorce has not been established. So, This is straight from Christ himself. So I want to go a little further. We're going to check a little further for those who say that or who may, for whatever reason, think that divorce is not um, real when it comes to the nation of Israel. It is unrighteous. It, no, it is very righteous. In fact, Christ himself just said to avoid fornication and all these things. Meaning, King, if you put your wife away, be it because she wanted you, she, she asked for the divorce, and you granted it, or you just wanted a divorce, you put her away, you gotta have that deal with divorce. You gotta have that divorce. Before you go do anything, before you entertain anything else. Now, back in those days, we had a courting period. So before you began a courting period with anyone else, and before she began a courting period with anyone else, that's what has to happen. Very righteous, not the preferred thing, but it is a righteous thing to do when done the correct way. All right, let's go to Mark. Again, still New Testament. I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. I'm going to go to Mark chapter 10, verse 4. And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. Moses, he didn't want to do it. It hurt him to do it, but he did it. Wrote a bill of divorce to put her away. Divorce has always been in the nation of Israel. It's not a bad thing. It's not a preferred thing, but it's not. Divorce is not a bad thing. And divorce is not just of the world, as we see here. This is within the nation of Israel, biblically. Biblically. So, it just so happens that divorce is in the law of the land. And it's in the law of the land to prevent the very same thing that Christ just spoke of in Mark 5 and 32. I mean, Matthew um, 5 and 32. And we're going to go back to it. I'm, I'm going to read it again. Put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication to prevent fornication and prevent committing adultery. Prevent polygamy. That's exactly what polygamy is basically man's lust for several partners. Even Christ said, you got to prevent that. You got to prevent the fornicate. You got to prevent the polygamists. I mean, she even said that. All right. And we're going to go into this last one because I did want to go to the Apocrypha with it just to see again if divorce is mentioned when it comes to Israel. Um, 
So we're going to go to Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 26. Chapter 25, verse 26. Now, this is to the kings. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, and I want to stop right there because I do want to say because of the hierarchy, because it's the most high, then it's the son or Jesus or Christ or Yahweh Shah. Then it's the king, the man, the man, the king, the husband. Then it's the woman, the queen, the wife. Then it's the kids, prince, princes, and princesses. That man, and that's in the appropriate order, which means that man is righteous. Man has to be righteous because everything under him needs to be teaching them righteous things. So this, if she go not as thou wouldest have her, you're, you're teaching righteousness in your household, yet she, which is just under you in that order, she's not willing to be righteous. You tell her, look, man, I know that you're an executive at your company, but you can't be wearing pants. But I have to wear a suit. You don't have to wear a pants suit. Put on a skirt suit. And she said, no, no, no. I like, I love my pants suit. Wait a minute. She's not willing to be righteous? If she go not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. A divorce because, see, the world teaches people that a divorce is bad. I'm going to say this. The, the, a divorce is not, again, the preferred thing to do. It should be a last result, and this is just my personal um, thought on it. Which again, you know, I'm only doing this. I don't do this at all often. But the the truth of the matter is, it's not the preferred thing to do, but it is something that you can do. It is not looked upon as unrighteous as long as you're doing it for the right reasons. If she says, and if a woman that is your a wife comes to her husband and says, I'm not happy. Is it best to try to work it out? Yes. If it can't be worked out and the divorce is what it comes to, is that a bad thing? No, it's just not the preferred thing. Okay, Israel. So um, I just wanted to touch on this. Uh, speak with you all about this because there are many misconceptions. The world says that a divorce is the word. I know people that, that were taught by the world divorce is the worst thing ever. It's not the preferred thing. Trust me, there are things not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. It, I, that's the worst thing ever. But this actually says that in order for both that husband and that, that wife, for that king and that queen, for that man and that woman to move forward, a divorce must happen and there must be a deal of divorce. Point one, right here, biblically. 
It's not um, still falls within the law of the land. So it's not like you'll be breaking the law of the land if you get a bill of divorce. No, that's part of the law of the land. So no, I'm not going to say again. It's the most preferred thing, you know. However, I will say that it is something that has been in Israel since way back. You know, we read all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament and the Apostle. So it, it's nothing new. There's nothing bad said about it outside of if you don't get that bill of divorcement, then you start doing some bad things because at that point in time, you start to commit fornication, you start to commit adultery until that, that bill of divorcement is there. Now you're doing wicked things. So the divorce is actually there to avoid you doing wicked things. All right. So I'm hoping, Israel, that it kind of clarifies some things for, for our nation because, again, there are people um, in the nation of Israel that they didn't even know that divorce was even in the Bible. It's there. In fact, I came out of pretty much everywhere that it is mentioned in the Bible. And hopefully this enlightened you on <clears throat> what a divorce is biblically outside of that which the world sees a divorce. All right. So with that said, till next time, Israel, Shalom. You have a good Sabbath.